I am digging our guest. They are uh, Dr. Taylor Chastain um, Griffin with Pet Partners and Megan Knoll of Cat Person. And I have to make a confession, a cat confession. My cat, Casey, is a shelter alum from the San Diego Humane Society. He is a nine-year-old uh, orange tabby who has quite the personality. And he has been a certified therapy pet for about eight years. So he and my dog, Kona, a terrier mix, we also a certified therapy dog. We go to Brookdale Memory Care Center schools, but we also teach pet first aid and I am so blessed to have the two of them team up with me. We call them Pet Safety Cat Casey and Pet Safety Cat Dog Kona. But walking into a building on a leash and a harness and sitting and doing paw touches and all that, Casey does it automatically. But I'm wondering, Dr. Um, uh, Taylor, what do you think of, I mean, that's what people are like stunned by, right? A cat that could and it's his decision. I know he's a cat. He's not a little dog. I, I let make sure Casey, it's his call. Right? Yes, that's such a good point because we do only want therapy animals to enjoy their work. They don't simply tolerate it. But I think there's something special that we haven't even uncovered yet. In research, there hasn't been enough. There's that shock factor of seeing what a cat can do. Even in some of our testimonies, you know, people would talk about clients with dementia and how they just come to life. Oh, when yeah. They see and I think it kind of grabs attention in a way, especially for some populations where that's challenged that we need to explore with these less common therapy animal species. So how long was the study take? I'm going to ask, maybe I hope you know the answer to this, Megan, but and, and how long has Cat Person been involved with this study? We've been involved working with pet partners for a little over a year now, right? Yeah. 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 Taylor, you're probably better suited to speak to like how long the active study work was yeah, it's done. We collected data for a few months. It was kind of a, a rare opportunity. It's hard to find our cat handlers and facilities. So, but we did it pretty quickly. And then we found ourselves with thousands of uh, pieces of data point to, to come through. And it was a really exciting project. So it is on therapy cats with a broader impact with other cats. So I've got this study in front of me and I, I want to kind of, if we could touch on some of, some of the highlights, but you found out that most of these therapy cats have come from a rescue group or a humane society. So they started off life, not, not in a great time. You know, what happened to mama? Where's my family? So what do you think of that implication, Dr. Taylor, to have these cats didn't have a great kittenhood, but look what they're doing now. Look, wait a minute. Look what they're doing me now. <laughs> you know, I, was do that. I love it. Yeah, I was honestly surprised to see that. I wasn't sure how that would pan out. But, you know, I love, I worked in the Department of Juvenile Justice before with my animals. And the rescue animals having such resilience has been just so meaningful. I think we can all relate to to some struggle in life and to see that these cats have learned to trust again, that they are want to go out and meet new people. They have confidence. It speaks to, number one, how amazing their handlers are and encouraging that sense of thriving. Um, but it's just really motivational, too, that no matter where you come from, there's always an opportunity to heal and then even give back. And I was also surprised that there were more neutered boys as therapy cats and that most therapy cats tend to be in the primetime years, you know, five, six years old. Did that surprise you, Megan? I thought they'd be younger or really older. What's your take on the kind of the the bulk of therapy cats tend to be around six and boys? Yeah, I, I well, I don't know about the about the boy girl split, <laughs> but the prime tone didn't really surprise me. I think it speaks to like the trust and bond you need to develop with your cat in order to be a successful team. And it was not surprising to me that the teams that are most successful and enjoying the work the most have had. A few years have come an experienced cat owner and to really, you know, understand and read their cats. So there is a long list of benefits that therapy cats do for people. And I'm hoping each one of you can maybe identify three. And who wants to go first? Raise a paw. Oh, I'll go first. All oh, right. Make us like, I'm in, I'm in the more obvious ones. Um, all right. Name three. Most, name yeah. three. 
I think the three that were most impressive to me were that decreased depression, decreased anxiety, and decreased stress. And that was reported both by the clients, but also by the facility staff that the therapy teams were going into. Very good. And how about you, Dr. Taylor? You got three up. Sure. So I'll talk a little bit about the the thing that was surprising was increased interest in cats, increased storytelling and about pets from the past, even for people, for example, with dementia who have a hard time accessing other memories and increased affinity for cats. So people have said, I'm not a cat person at the beginning or big time cat people by the end since they visited with the therapy cat. It was wow. a third, right? It was yeah. a third of the people initially said that they weren't cat people and then got convinced over the course of one visit. I yeah. think and when I hear, I say real men love cats. And my brother has a cat and I have good friends like Nathan, the cat lady and Sterling Trap King Davis and people like that. I think they're making it more socially acceptable. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I jokingly say dogs. They put the D in drool, the O in obey, the G in goofy and the S in seconds, please. But cats, cats put the C in candid, the A in attitude, the T in tenacious, and my favorite, the S in so what? <laughs> now, that's not a scientific study, Dr. Taylor, but we need to start treating cats not as small dogs, right? What is something, what's a superpower a cat has? Each one are going to pick. This time, Dr. Taylor goes first. What's a superpower a cat possesses that people need to know? You talked about honesty that came up in the study, and that's what people really like. They are very authentic and intuitive. And I think the clients in this study spoke to that being powerful. You feel chosen when a cat likes you, and that's special. We should honor that that's a different kind of trait than most dogs have. Yeah, I think people say, yeah, my dog loves me. My dog loves me. Oh, I think my cat loves me too. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. How about you, Megan? What's your take on the superpower of cats? Well, the intuitive really stands out for me. Some of our team members uh, were interviewed as part of the survey and had some really great stories to tell. One of the members of our team calls the cat nurse Margot because she seems to just know when she's not feeling well. But also when we sent this out as an email to our customers so that they could see the study, we got so many stories back from customers, responses of people telling us about how their cats had been through their side when they were sick or a partner was sick and just seemed to know that they needed that extra yeah. care, which was really magical. Well, there is a science to the healing power of purrs. It's not just me yapping out it, but their their hurts, megahertz, whatever. There is some a study has been done. Years ago, I was the editor of Catnip through Tufts University for eight years and got to study with people like Dr. Dodman and Alice Moon Finelli and others. So I've been very well schooled on all cats. We just have about a minute and a half left. And I wanted to just ask, there may be some people interested, Dr. Taylor, in having their cat become a therapy cat. And what kind of tips could you offer? So number one, we saw get your cat ready and familiar with travel. That's the hardest piece. You know, you want to make that a rewarding experience where we're not just going in the car for the vet. And then honor your cat's preferences. You know, there's tips all throughout, you know, the white paper, which you can find at petpartners.org slash cat person. But find what they like to do and do that so that you're not stressing them and and you're honoring their preferences if you're interested in working in this field. And go where? Petpartners.org slash cat person. Okay, cool. And speaking of cat person, we have from cat person, we have Megan Knoll. What, what's your message, uh, you, I mean, to tell people about therapy cats? And just that we hope that more that this study opens people's eyes who maybe hadn't been considering bringing a cat into their life about, lives about how special the cat-human bond can be. And then we hope that people who already have a very special cat in their life can consider some of the amazing cat therapy programs and how they can use their cat to kind of spread the word about how important that that bond can be. And where can people get their paws on the study? Who wants to jump in and tell us that? Where where can we find the whole study? So at that link, the petpartners.org slash cat person, you can download a whole white paper that will walk you through all of the really interesting findings. It's a really fun read. 